Apple has finally replaced the 15 inch MacBook Pro with this little beauty. This is the Apple MacBook Air 15. And to me, this is the replacement of the Pro, not the new 14 Pro and the 16 Pro. And in this video, let's talk about why this thing is perfectly underpowered. Now, getting into this video, I have been wanting to purchase a new Apple MacBook for a number of years. The last time I purchased an Apple MacBook Pro was in 2010. This is actually my wife's 2014 MacBook Pro. So in 2010, I purchased an i5 MacBook Pro. And I cannot imagine what that scored in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark because this 2014 model scores a 463 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, the latest Apple MacBook Air scores a 746. And so these are about the same price at point of purchase. And accounting for inflation, that means that Apple has not raised their prices, though they have continued to improve the build quality, usability, and performance of their laptops. Now, up until this point, you couldn't buy a 15-inch MacBook Pro. Obviously, if you know the lineup, we have the 14-inch and the 16-inch Pro as well as the 13 inch pro. However, there has not been a, you know, kind of budget friendly using Apple terms as far as budget friendly 15 inch or larger screen laptop. You were either purchasing the Apple MacBook Air 13 inch, the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch, or you had to jump straight to a Pro 14 or up to a Pro 16. So the price gap between a Pro 13 and then a big 16 inch screen was well over $1,000, leading me to not make a purchase for many years. Inside of the studio here, I have many Windows laptops, but I missed my daily workflow on an Apple product. I love Mac OS for just the daily tasks, writing docs, checking emails, benchmarking computers. It's just the workflow is so much simpler, smoother, and easier on Mac OS. Personally, I hate Windows 11. Just gonna throw it out there. I'm running Windows 10 still on my super powerful editing workstation, and I just cannot get over Windows 11. It just drives me crazy. I don't like some of the features about it, but that's another bone to chew later on. For this, I did not need a big, powerful editing laptop like the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And therefore, I have not purchased for a long time because the value wasn't there for me. So for me, it didn't make sense to get a 16-inch MacBook Pro for $26 plus dollars. I already have a powerful video editing workstation. What I needed was something for my day-to-day -day workflow and for doing graphic design work. So Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, maybe Figma or Sketch not SketchUp, just Sketch. And this was the Apple MacBook Pro 13 or the MacBook Air 13, and I didn't want a small screen. So when this came out, I thought, it's time to rock. Now, looking at the Photoshop score, like I said, it scores a 746, which is almost double the score of a 2014 MacBook Pro. So the performance has definitely increased, but like I said, the price point did not. Looking at Cinebench R23, you can see that this has great performance in line with some of the most common Windows laptops. However, because of the unified RAM and because of the non-bloated operating system, hashtag Windows 11, it runs so much smoother than equal or even greater performance laptops that I've used for my daily drivers. I was most recently using an Asus ZenBook Flip 15, which I really enjoyed. It was a fantastic laptop, but Windows 11 and the bloatware that came with it were starting to kind of drive me crazy when I was just simply doing my day-to-day -day tasks. On my big video editing workstation, I have four screens set up, so there's nothing really to distract me. I have so much screen real estate, but when you're working on a laptop with small screen real estate, it starts to get annoying when just pop-ups and little warning symbols and all that we love about Windows. Sounds like I'm hating on Windows right now. I'm a huge Windows fanboy. If you watch my channel, all I review is Windows laptops. I barely review Apples, but I wanted to be honest about what I'm doing in my daily workflow and how I'm now jumping on to an Apple laptop for my laptop daily driver. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. We've been using Aura to monitor our personal information online for over a year now and have been able to reclaim control of our personal data. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and 
anyone else that wants to learn more about you. You can use my link by going to aura.com slash Benji Kaiser to try a two week free trial to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitor, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link in the video description. Now, in regards to video editing, I was actually shocked to see how well this laptop performed. This laptop scored only a few seconds behind the latest M2 Pro from the 14 inch model of Apple's Pro lineup. So if you're doing 4K video editing, graphic design work, this laptop is plenty of performance. Now, if you're gonna do some serious 4K video editing, I would definitely upgrade this laptop to 16 gigs of RAM. I got the eight gig version with 512 gigs of storage because I'm not going to be video editing on this laptop. The most I might do is just throw a file onto the screen to make sure it's in focus and to make sure the audio is there, but I will not edit video on this laptop. This laptop will be reserved for graphic design work, for productivity work, and for streaming video when my wife and I wanna watch a movie. So that is really like the big use case of this laptop. It's just the day-to-day -day business productivity design that I do in my business. Now let's go ahead and jump into some things that I love about this laptop and what kept me from purchasing a 13 inch MacBook Pro for so many years. Now, first and foremost, there is no touch bar on this laptop. Praise the Lord, there is no touch bar on this laptop. That was the most useless design part, feature, whatever you wanna call it, on the MacBook Pros to date. I know some people love the touch bar. I absolutely hate the touch bar. And so let's not even, let's not even bring up that thing again. Now, next would be the 15 inch screen. This was a huge win for me because I like a larger screen, but I didn't want to lug around a larger laptop like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, nor did I want to pay the extra thousand dollars for the larger screen. It just made no sense. I didn't need that performance. And so when this launched, I thought, okay, they finally made a laptop that I am down to jump on again. Now, the next thing would be the large trackpad. This trackpad is actually slightly larger than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Let me show you real quick. Here is my wife's 13 inch MacBook Pro M2. She recently got, she actually got a new laptop before I did. Um, Cause I didn't think I wanted one. And then hers came in and I was like, all right, all right. I think I would like a new laptop too. Um, so you can see trackpad is a bit bigger on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And I know we didn't say we didn't bring it up again, but there's the atrocious touch bar. The next thing that I really love about this laptop is of course MagSafe. They brought MagSafe back to the Air lineup. I'm super stoked about that. Something that's offered on the Pro 14 and 16. Um, and as you can see here, it's not offered on the Pro 13, but it is on the Air 15. My wife literally was like, she, she, for a second, she's like, okay, send mine back. I love MagSafe. I want this laptop. And then also she doesn't like the touch bar either. But as I mentioned in my other video, she loves her case. And so she's keeping the laptop because she loves her case. And she's very faithful to the traditional MacBook Pro kind of more unibody design than the newly designed MacBook look of like very squared off flat top. Now, a concern of mine when I was going to buy this laptop was the flex. It looked so thin. I was like, is this even going to be a really solid design or is it going to feel chintzy? The MacBook Air for so many years, I just felt like, man, I just can't get on board with the MacBook Air. It's so thin. It's just like the, I don't know. It's just like the cheap version of what Apple has done so well for so many years. Um, an example I used in my other video was like the BMW 3 Series. I know I'll probably offend a lot of people saying this, but the BMW 3 Series is not their ultimate driving machine. It is more of their like everyday consumer. Hey, if you want a BMW badge in your car, yeah, we'll sell you this 3 Series, but it isn't their ultimate driving machine. You know, their M5, I mean, that is a car or their M6. I mean, come on, that is an ultimate driving machine. But their M their their three series is just more of like, hey, sure, yeah, we'll you know we'll sell you know nice car to you and we'll put our badge on it. But the X three and the three series sedan they just they aren't that ultimate driving machine, and that's how I felt about the MacBook Air thirteen for so long. It just felt thin, underpowered, not enough storage. It just wasn't the Apple product, the MacBook that I wanted. Sorry if I've offended a ton of you about your three series BMWs. It's the only example I can really come up with that really I'm, I'm passionate about. Again, I'm sorry. 
Now the screen is an area I touched on briefly, but it actually is brighter and more color accurate than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're a graphic designer, digital artist, uh, illustrator who wants a bright color accurate large screen, this is where it's at. It's, it's even better than the Pro screen. So to me, this is like, it's almost like they messed up calling this the Air because it is on par with the 13 inch Pro and it has more features. It's almost like they should have just named this like the MacBook. Like this should just be the now standard de facto MacBook. You have the 13 Air, which is an Air, right? It's thin, it's light. This weighs more than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And so that's not very airy of them. The 13 inch Air makes sense to call it the Air. Um, to me, this should be the MacBook. Like this should be like the classic. Like you want the MacBook, this has performance, it has MagSafe, it has no stinking touch bar. It's just the simple everyday user's laptop. And that's what I love about it. It's got performance, it's got the great screen, it's got a fantastic webcam. Speaking of, here's a sample of the webcam for you. This is the webcam on the Apple MacBook Air 15 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Uh, it even has simple, you know, fingerprint login. It, it's just, it's so essential. And for me, that's what I was looking for in a laptop for many years from Apple. And they were just going so many directions that didn't make sense for me. And they really hit the nail on the head with this model. Super simple, easy to use, no frilly features, great for productivity, students, business, and creative work. Now, if you're gonna be a big, intense 6K video editor, not for you. But again, this is for more of the everyday creative who's not shooting on 8K RE cameras. Actually, RE cameras don't come in 8K. 8K RED cameras or 6K RE cameras, right? Like that's not what this is for. This is a fantastic daily driver. And it's why I bought it. I bought it as my daily driver. And so far, I'm super happy with it. Of course, last but not least, it comes in many colors. And that just makes me happy because I have a blue iPhone. I got blue walls. I got blue pens. I'm just, I'm just a blue, I'm blue. A happy blue, not a sad blue, like a happy blue. Seriously? Not like a, I'm blue, da da dee da dee da. Click or tap the screen here for more videos and of course links in the description below if you wanna check the live pricing. I'll see you in the next one.